What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna tell you what it is that software engineers actually do. And to be honest, the answer is quite simple. Software engineers write code. That's gonna be it for this video. I hope that you found it insightful. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail than that. However, on the topic of subscribing to the channel, a week ago I posted a video that's been doing very well, over 50,000 views in just a few days, but I realized that over 55% of you who watched that video were not subscribed to the channel. If even half of those of you who weren't subscribed had pressed the subscribe button, we would be at over 200,000 subscribers right now on the channel and I would be a very happy software engineer. So please, if you could, consider subscribing if you enjoy my videos. With that, let's jump into it. I'm gonna describe the entire software engineering life cycle or product life cycle rather. What happens from the moment that you decide to build a product or feature all the way to the very end when you launch it and even afterwards. And of course, we're gonna be talking about everything that a software engineer does in between, which basically constitutes the entire work of a software engineer. Now, I will say that this will be focused mainly on a product-oriented web full-stack engineering life cycle, if that makes sense. I think it's going to be representative of the most amount of software engineering out there, but there are a lot of different kinds of software engineering that might be a little bit different. And I'm going to be drawing on my experience when I was a software engineer at Google and my experience working as a software engineer on my own company, Algo Expert. By the way, if you're preparing for coding interviews or systems design interviews, check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But so, okay, let's begin. At the very beginning of the software development life cycle, you have a product idea or a feature idea. This is something that you decide you're going to build. Now, if you're at a big tech company like Google, you, the software engineer, likely aren't going to be the person deciding that idea to build out. It's usually going to be a product manager or a VP or the CEO or someone high up or in a different role. But if you're at a company like Algo Expert, then you, the software engineer, might very well be deciding what you're building. That's what we do. But regardless, once a product or feature idea has been decided on, then the real job of a software engineer begins, and it begins by what I like to call gathering requirements. This is something that you will definitely have to do. It does not involve coding. We're not at the coding step yet. It involves really understanding what it is you're building. Because when you have a product idea, like for example, I'll give you a product that we recently worked on on Algo Expert that we just launched, a coding interview assessments product or feature. As its name suggests, these are just coding interview assessments. They're basically like timed coding interview questions to mimic a real coding interview. But just that, like that idea of a feature or of a product, doesn't actually tell me what we're building. And I can't just blindly jump into coding without actually knowing what it is that I'm building. That just doesn't make sense. So I have to gather the requirements by talking to the people who do know what it is that we're building and asking them questions. So for example, for this feature, Okay, is this going to be an externally visible feature? Yes, it is. Is this going to be a feature that has its own page? Yes, it is. In fact, it's going to have multiple pages. Okay, well, what are these pages going to be? Oh, okay, we're going to want to have some sort of list of all the assessments, and then we're going to want to be able to start an assessment, and the assessment is going to be timed. What is an assessment going to look like, though? Oh, okay, it's going to be a normal algo expert question, except that it's going to be timed, and the user isn't going to have access to the solutions, and there are going to be various statuses, so someone might fail an assessment, someone might pass an assessment. You see, there are all these details, big and small, that you have to gather, that you have to understand before you can get into actually building out the product. And that is part of your job as a software engineer. Now, once that's done, once you have a clear, unambiguous picture of what it is that you're going to be building, you enter what I like to call the design phase. And here I'm talking primarily of the engineering engineering design, not UX design, though the UX design is also very much related. But here we're talking about 
how you're actually going to design from an engineering point of view this feature that you're about to build out. Because once again, especially when you're dealing with large complex features, you can't just blindly jump into coding. Even if you know the various product requirements, you have to actually give thought to how you're going to build this out. And specifically here, I think that the primary most important design aspect of the design phase is the API design of the feature. In other words, your backend engineers and your full stack engineers are going to have to determine how they're going to design the API that's actually going to support this feature. And this is super important. For example, if we're talking about these coding interview assessments, well, we notice that there's going to be a page where we want to list all of the assessments and we want to have the assessments as well as all of the questions in the assessments. So the back end is going to have to expose an API method to list assessments. It's going to have to give all of the questions within an assessment. It's going to have to give certain data about these questions. But then, like we said before, we're also going to need a page where someone can actually take the assessment. And this happens to look like the normal Algo Expert coding workspace, except like we said before, it's going to be timed. So maybe the back end is going to have to expose a new API endpoint specific to assessments. Maybe it can extend the existing API endpoint for normal Algo Expert questions. How are we going to handle the timed aspect? Does the back end give the UI a timestamp for when the assessment is supposed to end? Does it not do that, but instead expect the UI to continuously pull the back end and the back end to return to it whether or not an assessment is done. There are all these questions that you have to ask yourself and that you effectively have to embed in the API that you're building. But because the API is so central to the product or feature that you're dealing with, it's very important that you actually dedicate a serious amount of time to this API design phase. And you can't just lock your backend engineers in a room and have them deal with it alone because this API is going to be consumed by your front front-end engineers, they're going to be the ones interacting with the API, and they need to tell the back-end engineers whether or not that fits their needs as front-end engineers. Your UX designers need to be very involved because API decisions are going to affect UX. For example, maybe the API needs to expose a certain amount of information in the list endpoint to support a certain UX design characteristic. Like maybe your UX designers or your product managers, whomever, don't want users to be able to see the category and the difficulty of an assessment question unless they've completed or failed the question. That is an API design issue. The backend engineers need to make sure that they take that into account. And if you're at a big tech company like Google, you might not be able to easily make changes to the API further down the line in the software development lifecycle. So you have to preemptively think of all those things. Point is, the API design phase is very important. By the way, this is a large part of systems design interviews. We have a couple of API design questions on systems expert if you're interested. And the key point here is that as a software engineer, you likely have not begun writing actual code at this moment. You've just been designing what is going to support your code. You might have been writing design documents or doing whiteboarding sessions with other engineers, but you likely haven't written any code yet. Now, once you're done with the API design phase, once every party is satisfied with the way the API looks, then people can start actually coding. So your backend engineers might go ahead and start implementing the API and all of the functionality that goes with it, and your front-end engineers might go off and build the parts of the UI that aren't dependent on the API, the parts that aren't blocked by the API. So that might be static content, parts of the UI that just don't interact with the server. They might also build out parts that do interact with the server, but everything except interacting with the API, or they might mock API endpoints. And eventually, once your backend engineers are done with the API, then your front-end engineers can complete everything else, wire up the API endpoints and the client, you know, have the client make calls to the APIs, and actually complete the feature while the backend engineers work on other backend features that are more internal. The point is, this is the part of the software development lifecycle where software engineers really do just code. They likely spend very long periods of time just coding, really developing features from the ground up, 
this is when you really do most of your coding as a software engineer. Now, of course, there might be a little bit more designing, like engineering design that happens throughout this process. Like for instance, front-end engineers might be deciding on the design of a front-end component or of the front-end state management aspect of the application. There are all sorts of other things or featurettes that people might be designing. The point is, this is when software engineers really get to coding. Now, eventually, the front-end engineers are gonna finish building out a first draft of the product or feature, and everything will be complete. Someone internally will be able to actually play around with the feature end to end. And here we enter another phase of the software development life cycle where you have to actually bug hunt the feature or the product to make sure that there aren't any bugs, that it's behaving as we want it to behave, that it really fits all of the requirements, and so on and so forth. So here, everybody on your team, including software engineers, are going to try to manually play around with the feature. So for example, for the coding interview assessments feature, I remember I allocated like 90 minutes one day about three weeks ago, where I went through the entire flow of the feature, the first draft of the feature, just used it as if I were a normal user. I tried to break the UI. I tried to look for edge cases, and I pointed out a bunch of bugs and improvements that we could make. We had this huge list where there were all sorts of functionality bugs, stylistic jank, improvements that could be made, both from a stylistic point of view, like visually, oh, we could change this color, or we could change the wording here, but also product improvements, things like, oh, well, wait, you know what, we're realizing that maybe it might make sense to show how much time has elapsed once you've completed an assessment. We previously didn't show that, the back end didn't account for that, and we realize as we're bug hunting the feature that that would be something that would be valuable to the user. Well, now we have to go back to the back end and tell them we need support for this at the API level. Now, going back to what I said earlier, if you're at a big tech company like Google, this might be really hard to add this late in the game, just because at those big tech companies, you have to go through API approval processes and all sorts of things. So you really have to think think preemptively at a big tech company like Google of everything that you might need from a feature point of view. For us on Algo Expert, we could make the change very easily. But so now we enter this new phase of the software development life cycle where you're still writing code as a software engineer, but instead of building these huge features from the ground up, you're no longer doing that because you've just done that. Now you're fixing the features or improving them or adding little featurettes like, you know, how much time has elapsed in a particular assessment question, and so it's just a different kind of coding. Still coding, just not big features, but instead small bug fixes and improvements. And I should add that throughout this entire process, as a software engineer, you're also reviewing other people's code. You're reviewing all of your teammates' code, making sure that their code doesn't have bugs, that it's idiomatic code, that it's clean code. You have to do all of this stuff on top of writing your own code. But so going back to all of the bug fixes and improvements, once that's all done, once you've gone through all of the list of bugs and improvements that you've had, and you might have triaged them by saying, okay, some of them are super important. They're blockers. We have to fix them. Others are really important, but not blockers. If we're in a time crunch, maybe we'll be fine with not having them. Others are completely unimportant. They would be nice to have, but if we can't make them or fix them in time, then it doesn't matter. This is another part of your job as a software engineer that you have to do. You have to be able to assess what are the most important things that I need to implement. And throughout this entire process, it's very common for you as a software engineer and for other stakeholders to continue bug hunting the product or feature over and over again as you make the improvements. So for this coding interview assessments feature, I was bug hunting the UI basically every day, looking for new improvements that we could make, new bugs that were introduced during the bug fixing, but incrementally or rather progressively, you are diminishing the amount of things that you need to do until you eventually reach a point where you're satisfied. There are really no more bugs or no more bugs that you think really need to be fixed or improvements that need to be made before you can launch the feature and you are ready to launch the feature. This is where there's a lot of what I like to call glue work, like 
work that isn't necessarily technical, that's just gluing things together, making sure that things are ready for launch. So if you're at a big tech company, that might involve getting approvals from all sorts of parties. If you're at a small company like us on Algo Expert, it's more just making sure that we didn't miss any things, we don't have any blind spots, are the back end and UI in sync? What day will we be launching this? Are we going to be making an announcement? All sorts of things. And once you've decided all of that, once you're ready, you're ready to launch, well, you launch the feature. And once the feature is launched, your job as a software engineer isn't done because after the launch, you have to actually monitor the feature. Number one, make sure that there aren't any like bugs that immediately pop up and you know, things break and your customers complain. If there are, then you have to fix them. And they might be small bugs that you just fix you know, at your leisure, or they might be really bad bugs or outages and you have to fix those. And otherwise, you might wanna just monitor your product and see, is it, succeeding by some definition of succeeding. So here you're likely going to have talked preemptively before the launch about success metrics. And if you have metrics that you're gathering, you need to make sure that you implemented the metrics gathering. So maybe you're tracking how many users are using the feature, how many users are clicking on certain buttons, and you monitor all of these things and you just see, you know, is this a success? If it is, great. If it isn't, well, you reconvene with your team and you figure out if there are any improvements that you can make or any changes that you can make. And at this point, you're in this sort of maintenance mode, and this is a very real part of a software engineer's job. You might not be implementing huge features or doing API design, but you are supporting an actively used product and you have to make sure that it keeps performing as it's supposed to perform. And again, this might involve fixing new bugs that pop up, making small improvements, refactoring your code if it wasn't good to begin with or if there are performance issues, and that's your job as a software engineer. And then this entire software development life cycle that I've been describing basically resets once there's a brand new feature or product that you have to develop, except that you might be maintaining other previously existing features and products. So this is the entire software development life cycle from start to end. Hopefully this gives you a clear idea or some idea at least of what a software engineer actually does. If at this point you found the video insightful, don't hesitate to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please do it right now. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. On Instagram if you like pictures and otherwise I will see you in the next video.